Yeah, my uh, question was if you have found out uh, any more information on hyperdispensationalism. Uh, it was brought up uh, about a week and a half ago, and I believe Pastor Mike, you had expressed some or some small amount of familiarity with it. Yeah, there are there are dispensations through the Bible. Right now, we're in the dispensation of grace. Whosoever will may come. It's not by our goodness that we're saved. It's by God's grace has been extended to, to us. Now, we know before Christ came, the dispensation was the, the time of the law. Before the time of the law, uh, people were governed by their conscience. Um, uh, Adam and Eve, as an example, in the garden, they were in the dispensation of innocence. Um, and so we do know that there has been different dispensations of how God deals with people. Now, hyper-dispensationalism says what applied to those under the law does not ap apply to us under grace. Well, that's not true. Again, Paul tells us that the law was the schoolmaster that brought us to Christ. And so that's why we know, and, and to what degree, and what kind of sinners we really are, is because when we read the law, we go, oh, I've, I've done that, oh, I've done that, oh, uh, I've sure thought that, you know, and we're, we're guilty, as the Bible says. So there is hyper-dispensationalism, which I believe is absolutely false, but as far as God dealing with people in different dispensations, we know that that is true, and again, this age of grace, as the Bible calls this time, we're in. Your thoughts, Scott? Yeah, Mike, I, I love what you said before the break. I totally agree with that. You know, and the one thing too, you know, when it comes to saying that, you know, when it comes to the dispensations, that God only worked with people um, in these particular ways during those times, and that was it. Well, that's not completely right, because when you look at, for instance, Romans chapter 4, Paul actually uses David, okay, King David, who was under the law. He was living during that dispensation of the law. And what's interesting is Paul uses David as an example of a person who is justified before God and made right before God through his faith. Uh, earlier in Romans chapter 4, he uses Abraham as that example, going back and citing Genesis 15, 6, that Abraham was made right before God. He was seen righteous before God through his faith. Now, that was before the law, but then right after that in, in Romans chapter 4, he brings up David and talks about how blessed is the man who knows his sins are forgiven, and then uses David as that example, and going back and quoting Psalm 32 and talking about how David, through his faith in God, uh, was able to have his sins forgiven. So one thing we do find, and I think too, especially when you read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 lists a whole gamut, a, 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 a whole list of people from a whole gamut of different dispensations, uh, going all the way back uh, to, to Abel, um, who was you know Adam and Eve's first son, going all the way back to Abel and going all the way through the Old Testament, you have all these people that live during these different dispensations, but what's the one thing they all had in common is they all had faith in God and in his word, and that was what made them right with God, and that's how God worked through their life and did what he did in their life. So, you know, to, to say, um, to, to get all hyper about the dispensations and saying that God, you know, could only work this way with this group of people, and that's it, that's not true, because in the New Testament, we have plenty of testimony that going all the way back to the beginning, uh, that God honored people's faith when they believed what he said. So, Mike? Well, and, and the other part of, of <clears throat> hyper-dispensationalism is this, that what was a sin in the Old Testament, like under the law, is no longer a sin in the New Testament. In other words, the <laughs> rules that God had laid down for that particular dispensation do not apply to any other. Well, that's not true. You know, again, if that was the case, then we wouldn't have needed a Savior. But we do need a Savior because, again, the law was a schoolmaster that brought us to Christ. Now, also understanding it, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, we remember when the Holy Spirit fell, Peter stands up 
with the explanation what they're doing, not the interpretation changing to a language. But he said, these men are not drunk with wine as you think, but they're filled with the Spirit. And this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Well, wait a minute. Now he's bringing the Old Testament law dispensation clearly into the new dispensation of grace. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So understanding then that hyper-dispensationalism is a false teaching, uh, we have to, again, realize that, in fact, God did deal with people at different times in different ways. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but that yeah. doesn't change the eternal right and wrongness of, of, of what God expects out of human beings.